So today we'll be talking about general wave properties. Now what are waves? A wave is a phenomenon in which energy is transferred through vibrations. Wave energy transfers energy without transferring matter. We have seen waves before, like waves at the beach. Imagine how, how they move from far out at sea and then they come forward all the way to you. Energy that comes from all the way out at sea actually comes to you. However, the water so far out at sea does not travel all the way to you. So we can liken it to a, what some may call a Mexican wave, what you see in soccer stadiums sometimes, where one guy um, stands up, yells, yeah, or something like that. And then the next guy takes its cue from the first guy and then stands up as well. And when the people all stand up, um, one after the other, it looks like a sort of a wave. Now, uh, in Singapore, where I come from, this is called the Kalang wave. The whole point of this is that this is sort of like a real wave. The energy from this guy seems to be passed to the next guy and the next guy all the way on to this guy. However, this man over here does not physically walk over to the man at the end. Similarly, imagine using your hand to whip a rope. Your hand goes up, sending this part of the rope up and it comes down again. The energy of the rope whip goes in the form of a slight wave in the rope and it passes on and on and on until it reaches the end. However, this part of the rope does not move physically to the end. Like, does the part that your hand grips move over to here? Nope, it doesn't. In summary, that's the idea about waves in which they transfer energy without transferring the particles required to move that energy. So now let's talk about two different kinds of waves. The first one is a transverse wave. Transverse waves are waves which travel in a direction that is perpendicular to the direction of their vibrations. Some examples are all electromagnetic waves like microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, and also your water waves. So, one way to generate transverse waves is to move the section on the rope up and down. When you move your hands up and down, this part of the rope swings up then this part of the rope would move across like this one, two, and three. However, you can see that this small section of the rope, it would move up and it will move down. But this part of the rope would not move to the left or right. Therefore, the particles over here are moving perpendicular to the transfer of energy of the wave. The wave itself moves from the left to the right. Okay, yeah, so the direction of its propagation would be to the right. However, the direction of oscillation would be up and down. Now, this would be the length of a wave, or what we would call a wavelength. Basically, we get this point over here, which is sort of like the bottom part of one, one of its waves and we compare it to the bottom part of another wave that is exactly adjacent to the first wave and that will be called the wavelength. Next one is called a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal waves are waves which travel in a direction that is parallel to the direction of vibrations. The only example in your syllabus that is a longitudinal wave is the sound wave. To generate a longitudinal wave, my hand moves to the left and to the right. And when my hand moves to the right, this part here will compress and this compression part causes the next part to compress as well and that's how my hand energy moves towards the right over here is a longitudinal wave because this part over here moves left and right while this part over here moves to the right for the direction of vibrations is the same as the direction of transfer of energy imagine if you were holding a slinky and you were pushing back and forth instead of swinging it up and down. Direction of propagation of the wave, which means the, the way the energy would go. You would see a push and there'll be an area of compression here which flows all the way to the end. So that's the direction that the energy of the wave is going. The direction of oscillation goes back, forth, back and forth. Okay? And therefore, this direction is the same as this direction. You can see that at this point over here, 
when I write the C here, is it exactly in the middle of the compressed parts of these springs. And therefore these are the points of compression. These parts over here, uh, they are the middle parts of the expanded parts of the spring. Okay, and these are called the centers of rarefaction. Okay, and so a wavelength of a longitudinal wave can be found from getting the center of compression of one part and comparing it to the center of compression of another part that is perfectly adjacent.